Hey all, it's Swiss, and this week we are finally getting to the fun part, uh, return-oriented programming, or ROP. So what ROP is, is it's when you take your overflow, and rather than jump to just one specific function, you jump to specific places in the program so that you can set up the stack the way you want, so that you can execute other functions uh, in ways that those functions weren't necessarily intended to be used in that program. So we're going to use a modified ver version of the binary we've already been using where I've commented out give shell. So we're going to have to be doing something called return to libc. Uh, for this one to keep it simple, I've included libc in the local directory, um, but we're still going to have to figure out where it is in the program. So we're going to leak that by doing a ROP to puts with the address of puts in the global offset table. Uh, if we check out the exploit, you can see I load in the libc as another elf so that I can reference it. Um, I receive a line, I send a line where I tell it to go back to main, and then I'm going to try receiving again. So if we run that, uh, debug lets me get all this extra data. And we can see that I sent these bytes, and I received bytes, and then it says give me some text. So we, we can see our, and then if we give it more text, you know, it echoes it back out. Uh, so we can see that that's where our buffer overflow is working. Uh, so now let's start talking about the ROP. So we'll import Poem Tools. We're going to set up the exe. And now we're going to create a ROP object from that exe. So within that ROP object, there's a bunch of stuff. Uh, but the things that matter here are around the gadgets and raw and then a couple of the others. Uh, first, let's talk about gadgets. So the way that we've traditionally worked through ROP is you go through and you find the gadgets you need, like pop RDI return, which is in here somewhere. Um, and then you use those gadgets to set up the stack. So you, so you wanted to find pop rdi return you would do find gadget uh, the array pop rdi return and it would give you that gadget so assign that to this g dot address we can tell where that gadget is now you could of course build this by doing you know either a fit where you put in i want 136 to be g.address, address, uh, and then you know 148, you know, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You could you could do it that way. Um, you could also do it with flat. You know, first thing is I want that gadget, uh, followed by what I want in that gadget space. And you could be putting that in to the ROP. You could also say, you know, r.raw, g.address, r.raw, 0x deadb. And then when we check out what the ROP looks like, look like that. And if we did r.dump, it would show us what it's doing. But that's, that's really the hard way to work with it. I never do ROP that way anymore. Now what I do is I use r.call. So now say we want to call puts and print out the address of puts from the global offset table. I'll do r.call exe sim puts with exe.got.puts. And then say I want to go back to main after that, I could do r.call exe.sim.main. Now when we check out that r.dump, it automatically did that pop RDI return, gave it the address of the global offset table, which we could see exe.got.puts. Yeah, it automatically put that in, put in the address of the global offset table, figured out the return uh, to jump into the symbol for puts, 51C. It adjusted the return and it goes back to main. So now knowing that, 
let's go into the exploit and do that. So r equals rop exe, r dot call exe dot sim dot puts, exe got puts, r dot call exe dot sim dot main, io dot send line fit 136, uh, r dot chain, which does the same as doing a string of the rop, but I think r dot chain looks cooler and prettier. So now, after it sends that, let's see what it looks like when it comes back. So we sent the bytes. There's our ROP chain. And we received bytes. And so we could see it stopped printing the first thing there. And then we got an address, 94FAAF7FF7F, and then a new line. So what we can do is we can receive the first line. We can throw that away. We don't care about it. The second line we're going to want to receive, but throw out the zero way uh, and then the third line is just more is just uh, the stack setting up again or the the main running again so we're going to do io.receive line to throw out that first one the address put string is the next one we're going to do false because we don't want that new line at the end uh, and then we're going to do an IO to receive line to clean, just to uh, kind of flush the buffer. Um, now we need to take that put string and create an address. So we could say puts is at u64, unpack 64, uh, the put string. And we're going to left adjust it to be eight characters by adding x00 uh, on the right. And now we will do a log.info, puts is at, puts. Let's see how that works. There we go, puts is at that address. So now that we know where puts is, we can figure out where libc is. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to say that the libc base is at our puts address minus uh, l, the elf of libc that we loaded dot sim dot puts. And then what we can do is we can adjust the whole libc elf by doing l dot address equals libc base and log dot info libc is at l dot address. And that looks right uh, since libc usually lines up on you know a zero zero there. So now that we have that, we can do our second ROP. So we're going to do R equals ROP again. Uh, and what we're going to need for it is we're going to need the system symbol from, bit, from libc, and we're going to need bin sh, which is also in libc. So first we need that system symbol. So system equals l.sim.system, pretty easy. bin sh equals next l.search bin sh uh, since it's an iterator and it needs to it might find multiple so it gives you an array back so now we'll do r.call system bin sh and we're going to send that back in io.send line fit 136 r.chain And let's try that. And we have a shell. So now let's try that remote. And we get our flag. So that's that's all for this video. Uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed it and learned something. Next week I'll probably be doing bit of a lighter lesson on how to keep your exploits looking pretty, um, some of the UI stuff. Uh, until then, feel free to hit me up on the comment section below or on Twitter at SwissK1D. Uh, until next time, thank you for watching.